just because you see that like this is the map of success doesn't mean that that's your map. Hey guys, what's up? I'm your host, Tori Mathis, and I'm here with the one and only Sean Mathis, founder of Miles Through Time Automotive Museum. What up? You know, Sean mentioned something very interesting in an episode a little while ago, and I think it is worth revisiting. You don't remember which episode it is? I'll have to look that up. But you said that you don't want to work hard, play hard, that that is the wrong way to think. I remember that. What'd you say? I want to work smart and play often. And that is a really big difference. I think that people have in their mind this, and I hate it, it's this work-life balance. And even though everybody knows that it's bullshit, I think it's like ingrained in us subliminally, I don't know, you know, subconsciously, that we really like go back to this whole like, but wait a minute, we're supposed to have this work here and... uh life balance here and it's supposed to even out or and then it always feels like we're off like ah this this doesn't feel right we're not we must not be doing this right and I hate that I hate that there's this and I don't know if it's a society thing but because we see things on tv or we see ads or we see social media we see the highlight reel of people's lives that we feel like we're not balancing up to whatever this like fake you know, persona is that we think we're supposed to do. And the work-life balance one is one of those that I think is super crappy and makes people feel like crap or feel like they're missing out when really, I think that it's just like readjusting how you look at things. Well, I mean, you look up anything and there's like this entrepreneur grind and you got to grind and, and, and just do all these things. And what happens is you can grind all day long and there's still potential you fail. You lose your family, like it, like the 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 risk for that kind of mentality is is so high psychologically because you know you think I well I, I gave it absolutely everything. The thing is, is there's no guarantees. So you give everything, you potentially lose everything, and then like what are you supposed to do from there? Like you you've done everything you're supposed to do. Where the thing is, is maybe you just didn't do it the right way, you know? Or maybe that thing wasn't for you. You were just talking about, like, uh, we had family come visit, and it's so interesting to be under around other parents because everybody parents so different. And, you know, obviously everybody's doing the best that they can and doing what they think is the best, but it's still very different probably than, you know, I probably parent very different than you parent. Um, and so everybody does it so different. So Sean's like, it's kind of crazy that somebody could write a book and be like, this is the right way because there's no freaking way no, that I, any of it is the right way. Like there's no little map. <laughs> no, there's uh let's see, there's uh, my sister. I've got two brothers and you've got, uh, three more siblings and so all of us similar ages with kids not one of us parents the same way not even close and i think we all probably look at each other and we're like (laughs) dang like can't believe you did that yeah i mean there's so (laughs) many differences between all of us and and, i mean you're talking only two different sets of parents between all of us and yet we're still all that different with our own kids and so i mean yeah i was like I see all these books on how to parent and all like it's all bullshit. All it is is like some information. It's not the the you know go to parenting for dummies. Like it, you can't you can't take that and and go. That's the only way. It's the same with diet books. Like they put out this like this is the diet, but everybody's different. Your body's different. You're at a different time in your life. Who knows? You know your stress level is different. Like you can't really compare your journey to whatever there is out there saying that it is the one. And so, you know, parenting, dieting, work-life balance, like it's, it's not really a one size fits all. And you can't, you can't compare yourself to that because it's not real. And, you know, I fell for this super hard, the morning routine. I thought, oh, well, I want to be successful. I should do one of these morning routines. And I went 110% in it. And I got up early before everybody else, right? Because you need that hour of time before. So I got up 
way too early in the morning. I had this whole checklist of all these ABC, you know, things that I was supposed to do. And I did all of them. Uh, and then, the, you know, took the kid to the bus stop and I ran, walked three miles and, you know, did all the things. I got so sick. <laughs> uh, and I think that the, it, maybe that was a good thing that happened because I think after that happened, uh, we switched things around a little bit. And I think you take on like Sean, we've talked about this before. Sean makes like the kids lunches. Well, Riley's making his own, but like, okay, so Bella, R Sean does that. I don't, I don't have to worry about that. And there's no reason that it needs to be me that does that. But like at that time, I really thought that like I was supposed to do all these things and I needed to do these. And if I checked off every single little line item then I would be successful, you know what I was? Burn the fuck yeah, out. <laughs> uh, so you know what? I cannot wake up at 4 a.m. and be a good mom and a good wife and a decent human. <laughs> uh, and when I did do that. Or get I, your work done. Oh, my gosh. And then when I did do that, like, I had to go to bed so much earlier than everybody. Like, it, it just, like, in order for me to try to balance it and work it out, like, I lost my evening time with Sean because I was dead tired that I had to go to bed. So... Just because you see that, like, this is the map of success doesn't mean that that's your map. Like, you really got to figure your own map out. Well, the thing is, is you weren't even more productive. No. I mean, because you, you worked harder. I checked Not, off. A, I checked yeah. off the all a lot of stuff though, Sean. Right, I but was a checker. It, it wasn't. It wasn't smarter. <laughs> it wasn't the right stuff. Like, do I need to meditate every day? No. Do I need to read this amount of pages? And you know. No, like, I think those things are good. And I think that figuring out like what it is that works for you is good. Um, but like that, it, just because you didn't check off all those things or you're not like. It's not the end of the world. No. And I think it's good too, even with, with dieting, you know, people are always trying to figure out what the one is and they just haven't found it yet. Like you, you can't go find it. I, I like that. You know, and you mentioned before that give and take, like it's, it's a guide and there's lots of guides out there. So go look at all those different guides, whether it's parenting books or diet books or, you know, morning routines and pick and choose what you want because that's totally allowed. My mom was always good at telling me that she's like, take what you want, leave what you, you know, you don't want. And I think you can do that with everything. Well, the thing is, is you don't know what works for you. Until you try it. And just the same, you don't know what doesn't work for you until you try well, it. Well, and just because something worked before doesn't mean it's going to continue to work for you. So things aren't set in stone. Right. And I mean, that's evolution. Like you, you, like how you are today most likely isn't how you were 10 years ago. At least I, I would probably hope not because you're living in the past if that's the case. I, I mean, you should be changing and evolving and. You know, especially like kids, kids changed everything. As the kids get older, it changes stuff. We cannot be the same people we were pre-kids. No. We can't be the same people we were Two when we had ago. toddlers. <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah, or, it's very or, different. Yeah, it, it just, it, it doesn't work out, you know, uh, especially we move, you know, we, we change all these things. You can't just keep doing the same thing. It doesn't make sense. So you keep trying different things and, and stuff, some stuff will work and some stuff won't and but trying it and, and like stopping shit that doesn't work is what is needed. You know, you try it, works great. You doesn't, don't do that again and keep going. And eventually you kind of smooth everything out and stuff starts kind of running on autopilot, which is what you want. You know, if you have to consciously think of all these things all the time, it, it is, it's going to stress you out because what it is, is it's decisions, decision, decision, decision. Whereas if you just start trying things and, and weeding stuff out, like become, it becomes habits and habits is what you want. You don't want to have to make all these decisions on what to do. But if a habit stops working for you, Stop like, cause it. a good habit might end up being a bad habit. Absolutely. Um, and so, you know, being able to, you know, shake that out and, and not keep it as like the waking up early. Uh, I was in the army. I had to wake up at the butt crack of dawn. I was also very young, <laughs> you know, and so my body then is different than my body now having two kids, you know, I, it's totally different. Like I could get up earlier then now, like I, I am not my best if I don't get eight hours of sleep. Like, and I know that that's how I am. And I try to tell the kids that all the time. 
Whenever Riley stays up way too late, he either is super grumpy or he gets sick. And I'm like, dude, you have to realize that, sorry, you don't get to be the party animal. Like, you need sleep or look what happens. Mm -hmm. Like, Bella naturally knows that. She knows that she needs to get to sleep and she puts herself to bed. And she wakes up early. Mm -hmm. And no matter what time, uh, you know, she goes to sleep, she wakes up early. But she's pretty good at, like, feeling that out for herself. Whereas Riley, like, I really have to point that out, like cause effect cause effect like every single time it's the same thing so you know sorry no party animal for you do you want to be grumpy do you want to get sick and he's like no don't stay up late then because you stay up past 11 and it doesn't work for you (laughs) so um but I, i think that's interesting that like some people can see that in themselves and some people like want to find it you know, and uh, with the work-life balance, if you're looking at it and thinking like you see somebody else that like, well, they have kids and they do this and they do that. That's one thing that's really bad for me is I see other business owners that don't have kids. And I'm like, man, look at all the stuff that they're doing. Like how if only we didn't have kids. <laughs> Not that I want to get rid of the kids, but I think that like you can't really compare because you don't know what's going on with other people. And you definitely can't compare people that don't have kids or that their kids are grown because, man, that is a whole different life. Well, and even if it appears that they are just like you and yet they're light years ahead of you, chances are, you, I mean, you still don't know the whole story. Um, what you're seeing may not be what it, how it really is. Um, and I mean, there, there, there's constantly famous people out there where you think everything is gravy and then next thing you know, they, you know, the couple's getting divorced or they... The person they, committed suicide yeah, and you're like, oh my what gosh. What the hell, right? Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's really probably one of the most unhealthy things you can do to ever compare yourself to somebody. My brother used to always get pissed off at me because I was, you know, a few steps ahead of where he was and he would like really get mad. But like, I'm not you, dude. <laughs> like, right. I'm older than you. I joined the army. I left. Like, I am, th- like, you can't even compare. Like, it's not even fair to either of us to do that. Different places, different lives, different everything. I mean, it's a, like, your life is your journey. You might as well compare yourself to yourself. If you want to do something and you haven't done it, go do it. And then just compare yourself to where you were yesterday yeah. rather than where somebody else is. Yep. It's like the kids whenever they're, when Bella wants to like draw something and she's like, you draw too. And I'm like, man, <laughs> you can't compare my drawing to your drawing. Uh, I'm a little bit older. I've been drawing a lot longer. <laughs> Although her drawings, because she is drawing so often, are getting really good, man, especially for her age. Leaps and bounds. Like even if you would probably look at stuff like two or three months ago. Like, oh, absolutely. Man, she is just getting so much better because every single day she is just like knocking stuff out. I thought she was still tracing stuff. And not only was she not tracing, she's actually reversing the image that she's she's sketching from. Um, so it's not even in the same direction, which is weird to me like it's it's but it i mean it it's damn good and, and that's because she I, does it all the time i was not going to say it like the tracing i had no problem with that like because then you start to figure things out even though you feel like maybe you're not really doing it uh it, it's enough to get that muscle memory going that man her stuff is good she is really doing really good yeah it's pretty amazing yep so, Sean, uh, what would you say for somebody with your whole work-life balance um, uh, theory, your uh, work smart, play often? What advice would you give people for that? I think we do okay. Other than COVID happened and we really haven't had that, that play play like we normally do. We're travelers. We usually stick at home and we work and we, we have our routine and everything. And then it's really nice to take a really big trip. Um, you know, when we can, we haven't really been able to do that, but, um, what advice would you give? I think it's, you know, don't compare yourself to other people, but maybe you should compare yourself to yourself and, you know, reevaluate where you are and and see, is that where you want to be? And if not change things, um, but comparing yourself to other people and making yourself miserable is not going to do it. Um, so, I mean, if you want to be successful, but then you also, you know, want to have a good family life or you want to travel or any of those kinds of things, you have to evaluate that kind of stuff compared to yourself. You know, if, if you do have a spouse and you do have kids and you do want to travel and you find yourself doing 
you know, none of those things or participating in any of those things. And your spouse is miserable. Your kids don't even know who you are. Um, but you, you know, you're grinding away and you're working and your, your business, you know, it is fine, but you know, maybe you don't need to be doing all those things. Maybe your business is more self-sufficient than you thought. So, and, but the only way to realize that is to, to evaluate those things and look at that stuff and go, holy shit, you know, I'm going into the office that I don't need to go do. I've got this right-hand man that can be doing all these things that I don't need to be doing. You can outsource all this stuff that you don't need to be doing. You could go spend more time with your family. You could travel. You know, would that make you happy? You know, don't compare your, again, don't compare yourself to somebody else and what they're doing. Like, are you capable of doing those things? And if you want to, or you can't, you know, take the steps to do that kind of stuff and you will find you will start to work smarter if you if you try to be smarter about it don't work harder because harder is just more work like work just, is work like me i'm checking stuff off <laughs> i think if you really try to like what is it you want to do across the board work life balance all of it figure out the smartest way to do it and that way may not be the way forever you know, so you're going to have to do this constantly to make sure that you are doing it the smartest way possible. New technologies will come, you know, things will change. You're going to have to keep doing it forever. Um, but it will keep it so that you are doing it smarter and you'll have more time to do the things that you actually want to do. Because again, if you just work harder and harder and harder, you will continue to just work harder and harder and harder. And I take it back to when I worked for Pepsi. And I could work as hard as I wanted. All that's going to do is make it more work for me. Like it did absolutely nothing for anything I actually wanted to do. It just was work. And that's, to me, that's one of the most miserable ways to live. Like I, I am not here on this earth to just work. Like you, you got to work and you've got to do things, but you can do it in a smart way so that you can actually enjoy the life. You know, I got brothers that it's all about work so that hopefully one day they can retire and then play like that's the stupidest thing i've ever heard in my life work smarter like what if there was a way to to work for 10 years and then retire versus 40 years before you can retire what would you do like if it was option a and option b option a 40 years and then retire option b 10 years and then retire None of the other stuff even matters. Those are your two options. The hell are you going to choose? Ten years and then retire. Yeah, but most people can't. I mean, that's so far-fetched for most people. I would rather play a little bit right now and work a little bit longer than, like, plug away, like, so hard. Like, some of these corporate people or, uh, I don't know, different types of professions like that. Um, and I could definitely do that in my business, too. And I could work so freaking hard in hopes that some other time, you know, work through the weekends, work through the evenings, because once I reach that, whatever that thing is, um, but I mean, I don't know. that's not the way that, that I would want to do it. No, <laughs> no, you, you, you want to have that time to go and do fun things. Um, whatever that is, whatever your hobbies are, if it's just being around the people you love. Um, otherwise, what's the point of any of it? Well, I think in that, you know, you bring up some, a couple of really good points. One is figuring out what those things are that are going to make you happy. I think some people don't even think about that, which if you think about that and like really think about it, like what is really going to make you happy and if it's travel or if it's, you know, working out more or if it's spending more time with your kids or maybe it's just like you want to sit in the backyard in a hammock, you know, a couple hours like a day, like whatever that thing is, once you figure out what that thing is, because you don't have to just hustle, hustle, hustle work. Like once you figure out what that thing is, then you can put that into your schedule so that you're happy now and not just delaying that happiness for some other time. I think people think they have to delay like they're supposed to, again, it's like that written rule of like, you're supposed to work really, really hard right now. And then later you can have fun. You know, you're supposed to have this beautiful work-life balance. You're supposed to have this morning routine. Uh, and I think that that falls into that same thing that like, there is nothing that you're supposed to do. There is no parenting book that tells you the exact map 
you got to figure that shit out for you because you are different than other people, but you totally have control and probably more control than you think of exact of your happiness and, and like what goes on in your life. Like you don't have to delay everything. Um, you can make smarter decisions in order to have a more happy, more productive life because it's not about just like trying to check all those things off if you're checking off the wrong things. And man, I was checking off the wrong things. You for Pepsi too. Sean, working so hard trying to, you know, get ahead and, and make good numbers. And they didn't care. It didn't matter. Not at all. But you worked so hard. In fact, if there was then something that uh, was out of my control or, you know, maybe I, I took that that holiday during that period of time and my numbers tanked a little bit, it made me look bad. You know, that that's an awful feeling as well because no, it, cause ultimately, no matter how good you are, all they remember is when you screwed up, <laughs> you know? And even when I was doing that, and it, you know, eight-hour days. Like, I don't want to work eight-hour days if I don't need to. If I can get everything done in six, like, that should be how long I work, not... I'm, trying to fill the two more hours. I'm hoping that some of this COVID stuff shakes up a little bit of the workforce. You know, it's like we talked about in another episode about working you know, by the hour. We don't work by the hour. We work by the project. And I think that a lot of things could be by the project. Because just because your employee is there eight hours doesn't mean they got eight hours worth of, done, of work done. They probably didn't. They're just filling that time with all these other things. Um, but I think if you try to aim for like project based and getting things done. You know, I think that people will be more productive. And so hopefully some of these people that work, they are able to adjust themselves to work smarter. Um, all of these office jobs or like phone type jobs, uh, computer jobs that people are doing that they don't have to be there physically. Yeah. If they're able to get their stuff done quicker, I think that's the way to go. And I hope more things change that way. Yeah. I mean, I, if you call miles your time, I'm going to answer the phone. Guess what? I'm not there. I'm not there. <laughs> I had somebody call the other day. Yeah. He's like, hey, I, I'm here. I brought you something. Uh, where you at? I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm not there, man. <laughs> In fact, I'm over an hour away from being there. Um, but that doesn't stop me from being able to answer pretty much everybody's questions whenever they call. Yeah. That's good. If we lived 10 years ago, I would have had to be there. Shit, when he was in the other location, he had to be there. Yeah. But... Yeah. That, you know, thinking of that, like, that was something that was important for Sean not to have to sit there so they didn't miss out on just, like, what we what we were regularly doing. That found and a smarter way to do was it. Was able to work it out. And, you know, it wasn't, it's not like you mapped it all out and figured it all out either. It was just, like, kind of a what is going to work, and it ended up working out. It actually was, uh, I went from paying to have a phone line and all that kind of stuff. So I then had to be there to answer the phone and all this shit that goes with it to, I just got a Google number, which is free. So it doesn't even cost me anything. And then it goes straight to my cell phone and I can actually program it so that it doesn't go to my phone while we're closed. So I don't even have to be bothered with any of those kind of calls, which are probably just fake spammy calls anyways. But during normal business hours, it goes straight to my phone and is, as long as I'm not on it with somebody else, usually from the museum, um, I can answer it. It's worked out great. It's definitely the smarter way to do it. Absolutely. So you know what? We have to go play. We have a vacation to go to. We're out of here. <laughs> uh, we're going to Florida. We have our first trip since all of this COVID stuff. We haven't gone anywhere at all. And so finally, we are doing our first trip right after this. So if you like this episode, we would love it if you would come back and join us on Tuesdays and Thursdays, because that is where when our episodes come out. Uh, we always talk about things like this, how to you know, live a little smarter, work a little bit smarter so that you can enjoy your life a lot more. And uh, we will see you on the next one. Thanks. See the beaches later. Uh -huh.